are uh, going to receive a presentation from uh, Mr. Carl Baugh of the Creation Evidence Museum. Ms. Baugh, if you would like to come to the podium. I'm Carl Ball, 508 Southwest Bernard, Lynn Texas, 76043, and this is my home. Mayor and Councilman, Council Lady and citizens, thank you for this opportunity. I'd like to present to you some plans that we have, but first I'd like to say that if our young Eagle Scout is a representative in common for our school body, our student body, our citizens, our young people, we have hope for the future in our city and our country. I was very refreshed tonight with the demeanor, the comprehension, and the actions of this young man. I'm happy to be a common citizen with you in our town. Some weeks ago, I met with the County Commissioner's Court in session describe to them the plans that we would have if they would sell the property that had been offered uh, publicly, legally, 4.2 acres behind Comfort Inn. Probably everyone in this room is aware of the fact that some three and a half years ago, a little 11-year-old girl named Joanna, who was dying of cancer, had one wish, and that wish could not be satisfied in the average community in any average community around the world, but could be satisfied in Glen Rose. She wanted to discover one new dinosaur footprint. Fortunately, a very fine paleontologist happened upon some new dinosaur footprints that were previously unexposed, but the weather had exposed them after our county officials had commissioned a drain for that property. He was a, also a member of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. The little girl was invited and her wish was fulfilled as she discovered a new dinosaur footprint. In short order, over 40 dinosaur footprints of three species were discovered, but unfortunately, exposure to the atmosphere will ultimately destroy those tracks in the open area. So I proposed on behalf of the Creation Evidence Museum to the county, and now in uh, good faith and proposing those plans to our city, the county commissioner's court voted unanimously to accept the plans and our offer. We purchased the property and are now indebted for it to the first financial bank, which is common procedure here. We have clear title to the property. I want you to know that we are a 501c3, and the scope of our plans for this property is all included within the scope of, of our recognition by the IRS and uh, by all the common agencies. We are and do, we have been and do practice obedience to all the regulations, city, county, state and national and to my knowledge have never disobeyed any of them we plan the use of this property in keeping with all the regulations of our good town and of any other regulations which might in the <coughs> need to be addressed most of the tracks called ignites technically once exposed to the air are ultimately destroyed because of carbonic acid that forms with exposure to the atmospheric conditions, particularly to humidity. I personally visited the Smithsonian, have asked their officials for their advice on how to preserve dinosaur footprints or other ignites, trace fossils. They had tried a number of mechanical means and chemical means, and we tried a number of chemical means I, on private property. We've never excavated any ignite or dinosaur footprints in particular on public property. <coughs> um, I met with the officials of a chemical company, and they offered suggestions, but those suggestions did not work. I reported this to the 
uh, Smithsonian Institution, and uh, they had tried similar conditions. That is coating the tracks, but unfortunately, carbonic acid forms leaches underneath any coating that might be applied, and the tracks are ultimately lost. But the Smithsonian knows of one way where the tracks are not lost, and that is to keep the tracks under placid water. Therefore, we've devised this plan. Here we have, in honor of the little girl, the little cancer patient who did ultimately pass away to our loss. We have this property and the project named in her honor, Joanna's Tracks, at Dinosaur Discovery Park. Every word is weighted in that title. Joanna's Memory, Dinosaur Tracks, and Discovery Tracks. On the left, and my pointer unfortunately will not pick up on the screens, on the left we see the blue channel. It was dug by the county maintenance crew for drainage of the water. All of the tracks near the bottom of that, the number two, number one is the cul-de-sac, number two uh, is a, an illustration of those dinosaur tracks. And they've been exposed, and due to the rushing of the water and due to the carbonic acid, in time they will be discovered. <coughs> I'm sure many other tracks will be discovered. Number three is a retention basis and a spillway. We have decided to use a series of retaining walls with the huge rocks that are already in place so that this will be very picturesque and the landscaping ultimately will be very appealing. At the bottom of that will be a reflection pool of placid water. That reflection pool will have the life-size concrete flat outline of the three primary dinosaurs that have been discovered by the tracks here at Glen Rose. Fortunately, mayor and council personnel, I had the privilege of discovering the only actual dinosaur fossil, which was a large acrocanthosaurus, as large as any that have ever been discovered. And the second most complete acrocanthosaurus dinosaur fossil ever discovered. 40 feet long, uh, 15 feet tall. We have 60% of his fossil bones. That's very rare. If you have 25% of a fossil, <coughs> fossilized dinosaur, uh, that's considered a complete dinosaur because these brilliant paleontologists can work at the rest of it and envision the remainder. So uh, we have three of those and be in the reflection pool, but in a flat profile with the dinosaur track itself imposed in that flat profile that's important for the rest of the purpose. The next thing that we have <coughs> is central, and it's number one that I'd like to describe. Uh, I work closely with sculptor, artist, Robert Summers. He has consented, once we have the appropriate funding just to cover his expenses and the foundry expenses, he has consented to sculpt a life-size bronze of a little girl, hopefully the likeness of Joanna. But such a likeness would require the full permission and blessing of her parents. At this point, I have not met them nor discussed it with them. If they do not consent, it will still be the generic profile of a little girl with her hand on the shoulder of a sauropod juvenile dinosaur. This will be one of a kind in all of the planet, a little girl, and in memory, of Joanna herself, because the area has already been named Joanna's Tracks. But in addition to that, we will, we plan to excavate in palm shaped pallet-shaped areas. There's a reason for this. 
I mentioned that the Smithsonian determined that those tracks can be preserved if they're kept under placid water. That's one reason those beautiful historic tracks at Dinosaur Valley State Park are still preserved, but only those underwater are preserved well. We will invite school students in memory of Joanna from around the world to come to Glen Rose under full technical supervision and excavate a track in memory of Joanna, a track commemorating their school or their private homeschool group, their private school, public school, college, university, but it will have to be a school group of some kind. Recently, I had lectured at the University of the South Pacific in <coughs> Fiji. Uh, that's the other side of the world. I also lectured at a private school, and the seniors decided within a few hours of my being there and describing our plans at Glen Rose, they decided to travel all the way to the United States for their senior class outing project to excavate their dinosaur footprint on this property. Each footprint discovered and excavated by a school group will be named on a plaque with a walkway around that little pond area. The GPS coordinates will be placed on that plaque with the name of a school or private group, but it must be a school group. The name of the school, the coordinates, therefore with their cell phones or computers, either on the screen and their facilities or standing there or anywhere globally, they can simply log on Google those coordinates, and from space, zero down to Texas, to Glen Rose, to that track, and actually observe the spot where their students discovered a dinosaur footprint. That is a unique opportunity. We care for children. So the way we will construct each of these ponds, the least separate ponds, the way we would construct them is, first of all, to have a slant and a slope where no child could conceivably or could, under normal conditions, fall over into the water. <coughs> Mayor and council personnel, the child can drown in six inches of water. So we plan to have at the bottom, once the tracks have been excavated in that particular pond, before going to the next one. We plan to have a concrete rim fully reinforced with a plumbing in place where fresh water can be supplied. We plan to have a six inch rim filled with only four inches of water. And no matter how many hands off or do not intrude signs we have in place, some child is going to inevitably want to stumble down the slope. So, at least we will have done the best we can to preserve their well-being. And then we'll go to the next area. Once this is underway, and by the middle of next month we plan to begin the cleaning of the property, we've already mowed the property, it is titled to us, we check to make sure that no vandalism is going on. Ultimately, we plan with the funding potentially in place, ultimately we plan to make this a very appealing place. But that isn't all of the plan. If funding becomes available, and that is basically the responsibility of the director of the Creation Evidence Museum, and he's my wife's husband, so <laughs> I, I do understand where funding comes from. We plan not only to have a bronze of a little girl, hopefully Joanna's likeness, a little 11-year-old girl, with her hands on the shoulder. <coughs> and what a dream every child has to place his hand on the shoulder of a dinosaur. But we respect the history of Glen Rose in Somerville County. There was a young teenager 
probably the age of our Eagle Scout, George Adams, who first discovered the theropod dinosaur tracks in Woodlands, the three-toed tracks. So if funding is available, or should I say when funding is available, because we are committed to this project, we plan with the permission and blessing of his family, and we have not yet discussed this with the family. We plan to have a teenage likeness of a boy, probably of, of young George Adams, probably in overalls, because that was quite common to wear to school in those days, with his hands in his pocket, looking down at a three-toed theropod dinosaur track, all in bronze. So we plan to commemorate and appreciation that discovery, but that's not all. Would you uh, please turn to the next slide? On the left is the likeness of young military recruit Charlie Moss going off to war. When he returned, Charlie discovered the first sauropod tracks, the big oval-shaped tracks. So still in military uniform, likeness, we plan to have a bronze sculpture if, if and when funding is available, of Charlie kneeling in full uniform in respect to our country and those who got us here. Charlie kneeling before his discovery of a sauropod track. But that isn't all. Next slide, please. We had a brilliant gifted genius, Ernest Albert Bull Adams, who's the only man we know to ever memorize the entire book of logarithms. He was asked why he memorized the book, and he said, I just got tired of working a lot. He was incredibly brilliant. Our city owes much to him, our state and county, and our nation a whole much like him. He was a gifted giant of a man. Next slide, please. It was Bull Adams who made our <coughs> county famous in many respects. So when funding is available in this order, we will have Robert Summers sculpt a likeness of Bull Adams as a scholar, and he was an incredible Rhodes scholar, examining the skull of Pantherson's woman and a young kid, because we want this to be the fulfillment of the dreams of children worldwide. A young kid in the likeness of Bob Summers himself, who was a buddy to Bull Adams, and this actually transpired historically. But we'll have Bull sitting on a park bench examining the skull, the bronze, that is, the bull examining the skull, and a little kid leaning over the edge of one of the bench railings, looking up at the face of Bull Adams, while Bull looks down at his academic preoccupation, the skull. And we'll leave space for the rest of us to sit one at a time and have our photos made beside Bull Adams. Those are the plans. They're contingent upon funding, but we already own the property, and we have a personal friend who is going to help clear the property and begin the landscaping within the next few weeks. But we have another dimension to this plan. Next slide, please. Uh, this is a slide of the Adams boys. Next, please. There is a beautiful building adjacent to this property, in front of this property built with the very finest of engineering, the finest of steel and concrete foundation, and drainage, because that area is known to have a uh, little problem in the past with drainage, but all of that has been solved, I'm assured, by the county and city officials. This is the Three Rivers property. Sue Holly is a very fine citizen and the owner of that building. It is vacant. 
as I present to you our plans and hopes. Remember, we are a 501c3. I uh, practice being transparently honest. If we can raise the funds to buy this building, and she's offered it to us, but it still costs a lot of money. If we can raise the funds to buy this building, I've explained to Sue that we have in our possession the homes of 15 different I dinosaurs. I'm not sure what you said. Yes. That's a plan to wake the audience up, to wake the audience up, and it works. I've had the privilege of discovering and directing the excavation of 16 different dinosaurs. We have those bones. No dinosaur, only two or three dinosaurs have ever been discovered in complete uh, fossil profiles. So these are not complete dinosaurs, but some of these bones weigh 450 pounds. Some of these bones are nine feet long. Some of these bones uh, discovered only a year ago, and not only one of those discovered here, the Acrocanthosaurus. One of the fossils that discovered a year ago in Colorado, belonging to us, <coughs> is the skull of a little juvenile Triceratops. Incredibly rare. If we can raise the funds to complete the project and purchase this building, it will become Dinosaur Discovery Zone. Those bones that are already in safekeeping will be prepped, placed inside this building. I've examined the building. The walls are large enough. They're expansive walls. For the full profile of each of these dinosaurs, with the bones that have been discovered and prepped in place, so the child can dream a little more. Children don't get to touch actual dinosaur bones, even in the museums. They touch replicas. <coughs> we plan to coat them appropriately to the point where they can safely be touched and embraced <coughs> by a child. So that 16 different dinosaurs will be profiled in that building, and it will be dinosaur discovery zone. Concluding paragraph, I mentioned that I'm transparently honest. If all of this is fulfilled, and the park will be fulfilled, we own the property. But we would like to fulfill this phase of it for uh, appropriate parking, for school buses from all over the country, a month ago, I spoke in Indianapolis. A large school of 1,600 students said, you can count on us. We're going to be there. And I'm sure there will be scores of schools, maybe hundreds of schools. We must have appropriate parking that is mandated, and we follow all the mandates that we're aware of. But if this becomes a part of those plans, for 501c3, that means it'll be taken off the tax rolls. I want you to be aware of that. However, hopefully there will be enough sales inside with dinosaur paraphernalia, with books, with tapes that have to do with dinosaurs, so that our taxes paid back to you will compensate far above what you will have lost by taking that property off the tax rolls. Mayor and council personnel, citizens, that's our presentation. Do you have questions? Council members, any questions? Of course. Council Member Brown? If the building is purchased, um, <coughs> is that the amount of dinosaur bones that you're referring to? Is the building going to be overly large for that, and will you create the building for some other uses as well, or will it take the entire building? It'll take most of the building, but we will need a, we will have a gift shop for books and tapes and souvenirs. Uh, we can envision many schools, many people coming to Glen Rose just to see this, and if they're grandkids, 
have excavated their school. They want to see the track their grandkids excavated. So uh, there is a very nice hip shop area. But 16 dinosaurs will fill this building, upstairs and downstairs. The full profile, you understand, we want the right. profile of the big. Uh, Pluricoelus, which is now Paloxysaurus, which you know, 60 to 70 feet long. And a big Apatosaurus that I discovered and we excavated in Colorado. We have all of his articulated vertebrae. Uh, and we have his, all of his appendages. He's phenomenal. He's 60 feet long. It's going to take two walls of that building just for the Afrocanthosaurus and the Apatosaurus. Just out of curiosity, how many, how many uh, dinosaur footprints will be able to of the schools that were discovered the next We have calculated probably 150 different additional dinosaur footprints that could be excavated because they're quite dense. Uh, now that is outside the drainage area. Uh, there's no way, uh, there's an easement on the drainage area so we can't build anything on that and, and we wouldn't want to because right. it's a drainage area. Those tracks will ultimately be lost, unfortunately. <coughs> but as I described, we have the method, the only proven method of preserving the other tracks. And there are other easements on the properties, but there's enough space to excavate at least another 150 dinosaur tracks, assuming that those dinosaurs continue where they went, because they go in every direction, and that's good. Right. It's heavily popular. The, the job's going to be stopping the kid once they discover their track because they're going to have to back up for another school to discover the adjacent track. And they will go through the entire procedure of the Macho Eagle Scouts will, will help to remove the overburden and then the girls will get there and each have their opportunity. One more question. Yes, sir. Um, Besides the uh, tax exemption, uh, is there anything maybe from the city uh, that that you're thinking of off the top of your head to for the project, or is it all in uniform right now? Is it all being laid out? We uh, we had a, our attorney, of course, uh, before we were buying the property, check everything out, check the regulations. To our knowledge, we have met in our meeting, and everything that we have there will to everything that I've discussed certainly should meet the regulations, but if, if the city knows of any regulation we've not met, for instance, uh, parking, if we, <coughs> hopefully we will be able to buy this park, there will be sufficient parking. We've already met with a city official, uh, and he has assured us that there would be sufficient parking here <coughs> to meet the traffic for the 4.2 acres. But if we are not able to buy this. We must provide parking on that area. There will be sufficient restrooms, water, etc. here uh, in this building, and and we will we will have fencing and hopefully hopefully we'll never have an accident. We don't want this to become a parking park after dark. Uh, we want it to be respectfully maintained. And with a bronze image of the little girl, or a little girl, with George and Bull Adams and Charlie Moss, uh, it's going to have a national appeal. But there's nothing, to my knowledge, I've lectured in 22 different countries, there's nothing, to my knowledge, to compare with this anywhere else. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. We, we would like one thing, uh, we'd like your blessing because we are transparent in everything we do. We plan to follow in the literature that's distributed. We plan to follow the Texas state mandate that not all classrooms follow, unfortunately. The textbook commission, we've been aware of the regulations for the years and over the decades. The textbook commission uh, it was commissioned, and this 
classes are to follow this in science curriculum, and we are chartered uh, with a broad charter which involves uh, education, science, religion, social work, etc. We have a broad charter. And the literature that might be handed to anyone will, will cover <coughs> both areas. Uh, in scientific <coughs> origins question, there are two basic concepts. And if either of those holds any scientific merit, then it is to be discussed. And that is mandated in the textbook. While, or that is mandated to the textbook commission. While that is not normally practiced, we will practice it there. We will give both the, the evolutionary and the creation outline as to the origin of those tracks and make that available to anyone who visits the area. And they can make up their own minds, and that's good education. We will not foster our opinion on anyone. We will just lay out the basic facts parallel to each other on the same page in the same pamphlet and let them practice good education. Yes, I just have a statement. I want to say that it will be in my prayer because this is a dream that my husband would love. Preserving history in Bull Adams. And you have touched my heart tonight with your dream and I, I just pray God gives you a smooth path as you go. Thank you. We already have the participation of the world's greatest sculptor. It just happens to be Robert Summer. <laughs> and, and in your prayers, pray that I can raise the funds for all of this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ball. Very much. <laughs>